and here we go again youtube team keep it clean what's going on the scene raven here with another video and in this video this was brought to my attention by my guy edgar allen doe at 4 37 p.m he said interesting patrick queen removed all his ravens pictures engraving what are your thoughts and then i looked at instagram myself i said "Ooh, okay now and then my guy Michi said, hey, he changed his Twitter bio to us. I said, whoa, okay, now hold on there, buddy. And I remember the last time this happened, and not even just with any team. I remember this, the last time this happened with a Baltimore Ravens. Do you remember? I remember. Well, there was one instance with Rashad Bateman. He removed all his stuff. But then it, it came out that he was updating his, uh, I think, his management. Uh, but then there was another instance where Hollywood Brown removed everything Ravens from his IG. And initially, a lot of people thought, hey, why are you making a video on that, man? That doesn't mean anything. And then what happened? Hollywood Brown was later traded. Social media is powerful because social media, it can do a lot of the talking for you. It can. And I'm not saying Patrick Queen is going to be traded. I, we don't know what's going to happen. But... It is something to keep an eye out for. Now, um, I would love for the Ravens to keep him. I would love for the Ravens to hold on to Patrick Queen, but it's just a weird similarity to last year because I remember last year, Hollywood, Hollywood Brown. The question came up, hey, Eric DaCosta, are you going to pick up Hollywood Brown's fifth-year option? Eric DaCosta said, oh, yeah, we're going to be picking up the fifth-year option. We got it. And what happened? Nope. They didn't pick up a fifth year, nothing. They picked up a first round pick and the Cardinals ended up picking up the fifth year option, but the Ravens did not pick up a thing. But then this year, when he was asked the same question about Patrick Queen, hey, Eric DeCosta, you gonna pick up that fifth year option? I don't know about that, man. We, we, we have a conversation, we ain't talking about it right now. We don't know yet. We haven't made a decision on that. He didn't give an answer. So, I don't know. I, Y'all guess is as good as mine. People tripped at me. They went off on me when I said that I expected Eric DaCosta to trade Patrick Queen either this or next offseason. Um, this offseason is because I, I, I did not expect him to pick up the fifth-year option. and I, Well, actually not next offseason. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to trade him next offseason unless they picked up the fifth-year option. But I said this offseason because you could actually get something for him. This year, next offseason, he will be able to walk as a free agent, right? Because he was drafted in 2020. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Yeah. So this is his fourth year. So this is his last year of his contract right now. So if you don't pick up the fifth year option, then he's out of there. He's out of there. So Eric DaCosta has shown as long as he's been the GM, he likes getting stuff done early rather than later. Eric DaCosta obviously had no plans on paying Hollywood Brown. Didn't even want to pick up the fifth-year option. What did he do? Shipped him out. And obviously Hollywood, he wanted to be shipped out too. And Eric DaCosta, okay, cool. I'll get a first-round pick. You know, I'm going to draft picks. Bye. I ain't going to replace you, but I'm going to get ready anyway. Another conversation for another day. But with Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith, also an inside linebacker. What just happened with him? He got paid. He got paid before the season was even over. He got paid, I think, what, right before the playoff game, right? He got <laughs> he got that Marcus Peters payday where you get traded for in the middle of the season and then you get paid right before the playoff game and you lose. So, um, But it's okay because, yeah, you got your $100 million contract, so you winning. You winning. So shout out to Roquan Smith. But anyway, um, yeah, back to Patrick Queen. Uh we just got to wait it out. We, we just got to wait it out. Um, what I was saying about social media is powerful because a lot of athletes, they use it to send messages, send messages to fans, send messages to the team. And they say a lot without saying anything at all. They'll, they'll post timely quotes. They'll post timely tweets. And when they post these quotes or tweets or lyrics from a song, they know, they know what they're doing. These athletes are very, very smart. They know exactly what they're doing. But what a lot of them do, they'll post something, and like if it's lyrics from a song or something, and then fans will be like, wait, what does that mean? What are you talking about? And then they'll be like, oh, it was just a song. Mm, those particular lyrics, huh? Just a song, huh? I remember with um, Stefan, oh, Stefan Diggs, his uh, last days with the Vikings, 
Remember when he was tweeting all that crazy stuff? Or oh, I guess not so crazy, but tweeting all that cryptic stuff. A lot of it. A whole lot of it. Remember Yannick Ngagwe, his last days with the Jaguars. He was tweeting a lot of cryptic stuff. Remember Kyler Murray, his last days on his rookie contract. He said, you know what? Cardinals, watch this, cleaned. No Cardinal stuff on the IG no more. But it works. It works. You can laugh at it all you want to. You can call it whatever type of name you want to when players do this on their social media. But guess what? You, you, about 99.99% of the time, when a player erases all that stuff off of social media, something ends up happening with them within the next month or so. Something that happens after that, like every time. Every time. Something goes down. So we'll see. Now, my dream scenario, now, again, I, I wanted this for Orlando Brown Jr. I wanted this for Hayden Hurst as well. Uh, I would want the same thing for Patrick Queen. Um, but I kind of, in my, in my opinion, I see how this story is going to go, not because Patrick Queen is a bad player because he's not at all, um, but because it's, it's a business. It's a business. They already paid one inside linebacker. They're not going to pay two. Well, they're highly, I, I doubt that they're going to pay two. That's just my opinion. But y'all know I don't know anything from nothing. But. What I think, uh, what I would love for, to happen, and again, I said I wanted the same thing with Hayden Hurst and same thing with Orlando Brown Jr. I would have loved for both of those guys to play out their rookie contracts with the Ravens because the Ravens were a much better team with those guys than without. Those guys helped the Ravens out a lot, and I wanted them to stick around as long as, and that was just me being selfish. I was being a selfish fan. Um, but Eric DeCosta was like, no, you ain't going to just ride out that rookie contract here. I'm trying to get compensation for you right here, right now. So Hayden Hurst ended up getting shipped off before his rookie contract was up. Orlando Brown Jr., now Super Bowl champion Orlando Brown Jr., he ended up getting shipped off before his rookie contract was up. Uh, and there are more, too. But with Patrick Queen, like I said, I just I, 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 once they made the Roquan Smith trade, and we talked about it a lot back then. That's when I was like, oh, yeah, that's probably a wrap for Patrick Queen. It's probably a wrap for him. I just, I, I, I don't see them doing it. I don't see them giving him an extension. Um, and, again, Eric DaCosta, he would like to get something now rather than later. Uh, so he ain't going to want to get, oh, no third-round comp pick. No. He's going to want to try to get a, the, as highest compensation as he can possibly get. And I think for Patrick Queen right now, hmm. I think for Patrick Queen, you can get like a second or third round pick, probably. Now, real quick, um, some of y'all are very petty. Very, very petty. Uh, my guy, I, I ain't going to say what his name is. I'm, I'm going to let you keep it on. <laughs> he, he, he sent me a DM. He said, PQ took down all his stuff. At least we know this is a step forward in gathering money for Lamar. I said, wow, you, really? <laughs> Come on. Now, like, let, anyway, um... So well, that's that. But shout out to Patrick Queen. Whatever happens with Patrick Queen, shout out to Patrick Queen. Because um, he he started off, his, his rookie year started off hot. I mean, his rookie season, it, it went pretty good. It was some little hiccups here and there. Um, but then his the sophomore season, uh, up and down. Um, and then this last year, it was some hot moments and some really bad moments. Then some more hot moments. Then he started building up this level of consistency. He got better and better. And then, boom, they said, oh, Roquan Smith, let's go. They traded for Roquan. And then that hit, Patrick Queen had already been doing better, but then after they got Roquan, he did even better. So that was a good thing. That, that boosted his stock a lot. That boosted him. And he still had his hiccups here and there. But every player that Roquan Smith did too. He did too. Remember that Steelers game? Remember the game winning touchdown for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Remember who gave that up? It wasn't Patrick Queen. Hey, yo. Anyway, Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, and just like a lot of people feel like because he wiped his stuff off Instagram like Patrick Queen may be when it comes to being with the Baltimore Ravens, I'm out. But, hey, we'll see because we, we don't know. We won't know till we know. Pago PQ, shout out to you.